Oh, different computer, there's no timer. I was waiting for the timer to kick on. Um, yeah, so this morning, the laptop I usually use completely crapped out. Um, it had been charging all weekend and it wouldn't turn on. And it's, it's been flirting with uh, disaster for a while now. So yeah, I'm, I'm still you know, having to get some settings adjusted and everything on here. Uh, they were supposed to bring my new board last week and they did bring it, but they had the wrong size mount bracket for the cart. So they had to take the whole thing back. So I had to hook all this back up. But uh, I brought my backup laptop and I think it's gonna work okay. So that's why there's no video, this, there wasn't a video this morning because there was literally nothing to record it with. The computer wasn't even, wasn't even, uh, didn't have enough charge to work. It worked for 15 minutes and it died and that was on the cord, so. Yep, all right, so real quick before we start talking about Percent Lab 3, uh, we remember we have Percent Lab 2 due tomorrow night by midnight, and we've got all these pictures in here to help you out with, but if you have a question about any of the problems, we can go ahead and look at that now. We won't do the whole thing, but we can at least make sure that you know what you have to do uh, on said problem. Uh-oh, yeah, of course it's gonna open up over here. So let me just pull this over. Come on, there we go. Oh, please work. No, it's not what I wanted you to do. Okay, yeah, new, com different computer. It's still learning my habits. All right, view page width, there we go. All right, any questions about the uh, student copy on uh, Percent Lab 2? I'm just using the student copy so I don't have to guess what order they popped up on on the answer entry. But uh, did anybody have any questions about either of those? I'm a little stumped on number three. So three was the percent change problem but you have to make it so let me pull up my pen here well i thought i turned my pen on where did it go Let's try it again there it is okay Nope. Well, that's good to know. It's not going to work on it. There it is, finally. Good grief. Free program. All right. <clears throat> so, this one, it says your current salary is 18. You're old, you were told you will get an increase of $25 per hour. What is the percent increase? So, you already know it's going to be an increase, but your current salary is going to act as your old salary. Uh, I've got to adjust this back a little bit here. No, I don't want to draw a line. There we go. All right, so your old salary was the 18, and then the 25 is your new. So the formula for the percent change, remember, is percent program still loading. It always takes a minute. Current is the old, and you're told that you're going to get an increase, so the increase is what your new one is going to be. Yep, so new minus the old divided by old times 100. So when you substitute, it's going to say 25 minus 18 divided by 18 times 100. And then that will make your percent. Just follow your order of operations. Any, uh, any others? Okay. Eight, yeah. We had somebody ask about eight this morning as well. So eight is the salary question, all right? So let's go to eight real quick. So remember with eight, <clears throat> first you've got to find your gross pay, all right? So your gross pay, you have to build your equation. 
So you currently make $16 per hour and you get time and a half for all hours over 40 that you work in a week. So there's not, you just have to kind of pile everything in. So 16 times 40 plus, and then it says time and a half. So that's 150% or the 1.5 times the 16. And then that gets multiplied by the hours over 40 that you work. So if you worked 58, 58 minus 40, that makes 18. So 16 times 40 plus 1.5 times 16 times 18, that will get you your gross pay. Then you have to find your net pay, and the net pay says company withholds 30% from your check, so that's going to be the gross pay, whatever you determine it to be, minus 0.3 or 30% of the gross pay. And then whatever your net is, that is your take-home pay. All right, the net is your take-home pay. So you got to, before you find the net, you got to find the gross. Yeah, yeah. I think in the video that we recorded last week, I think we went over gross and net and all that bunch of stuff. So, yeah. All right. Any others? Oh, well, Lord, don't cross them out. Never give up, never surrender, Shelby. I'm just, I'm not going to do them, and he can't make me. Yeah, I bet I can. It's called a zero. All right. So five is markup, <clears throat> and you're trying to find the wholesale price. So the formula for markup is retail equals wholesale times one plus your percent markup. So then the retail price, it tells you, is 175. You don't know the wholesale price, but you know that the markup is 285%. So one plus... 285%. So then, from here, turn 285% into a decimal, add it to 1, whatever that is, divide 175 by that, and it'll tell you what the wholesale is. Yeah. I don't want to give you too much on this, but that'll point you in the right direction. So you just do inverse operations. After, after you Convert the percent to a decimal and add it to one. You solve it with inverse operations. Okay, so six is, what is the other two-parter where you have to do the discount formula, then you have to use the tax formula. So you have to use discount. Oh, that's not how it goes. Hold on. It is new equals old minus percent of old. So the normal price is 220. It's currently on sale for 35% off. So that means your new price is going to be the 220. Ah, shoot. 220 minus 35% of 220. So find the new price of this, you do 0 0.35 times 220, take that from 220, then that will tell you what your new price is. Where the confusion comes in is that whatever the new price is here, that gets used in the tax formula, which you can, which you would say total equals, uh, we'll say old plus percent of old. So now the new price is going to act, where's my eraser at? The new price is going to act as the old price. So it'll be whatever your new one was. So the total 
is equal to whatever you found on the previous part plus 8.5% of whatever you found on the previous part. When I see the word discount, I can automatically add a decrease? Yep, yep. So you're going to apply a decrease to the 220, the, the decrease percentage. You're going to get that discounted price, and then that discounted price is what the tax is applied to. So whenever you go to ring something up, that's what they do. Like, oh, okay, it was 25% off, let's take that off, and then that number is what the tax gets applied to, there you go. Yeah. So yeah, it was, one, it was the other two-parter. Do the discount, <clears throat> apply it, take the new discounted price, let it act as the old price in the tax formula, run the, uh, run the tax, and you're good to go. All righty. We ready to start looking at Percent Lab 3? All right, remember this is due tomorrow night. By midnight. Okay. Let's close this out here. Okay. Not a lot as far as like, you know, pictures and, you know, other things in Percent Lab 3. Now, granted, I do have videos. I've got the video from September 18th. Again, and I say this on all the new videos for this year, if it has a date before 2024, if it mentions anything about a work entry, ignore it, because there's not one. But if you look down here, I've got each one of the questions for Percent Lab 3 virtually fully fleshed out. And the reason for that is because this lab is really weird. It used to be a group lab, but I don't do any group work. It used to be a group lab and it was so tough that I was basically, when I taught the support classes, I was having to answer the same questions every time someone sent me a message. So what I decided to do was rather than just kind of cut everybody loose on it and you know have them fend for themselves, we're, I'm just going to show you how to set each one of these up and then you can take what I've given you and then use it to find your answers from there. So go ahead and pull up where it says Critical Thinking Lab 3, the Eggman student copy. All right, enable editing. Yes, go to view, go to page width. All right, so on this document, that might actually be too big. Let's go back a little bit here. Go back normal. There we go. Okay, so on this document here, you've got a picture of uh, the nutrition facts from a carton of eggs. You can tell it's a carton because one serving is one egg and there's 12 servings in the container. So, you got your fat, cholesterol, sodium, carbohydrates, and proteins, and calories, and all that good stuff. So here's the setup, okay? James decided to go on a diet called the Whole30. One of the things you can eat on that diet is eggs. He decided on eating only eggs for his source of protein. So first off, we know that uh, by the time that he gets done with this, which is like 30 days, James is gonna smell terrific. <laughs> and he's probably gonna be living a very solitary lifestyle for a while. I, like <laughs> I was thinking sulfur, but... <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, vinegar too. Uh, according to the nutrition facts, one egg contains about six grams of protein, and you can see that here at the bottom of the uh, picture where it says protein six grams. This is said to be 12% of the protein needed daily for a diet based on 2,000 calories. So, some more information that we know. Whenever you look at the nutrition facts, it's based off of a 2,000 calorie a day diet. That's what the nutritionalists and everybody recommend for everyone. Of course, you know, some people are below that. Some people are above it. Most people are above it, honestly, me included. Um, however, James has a problem. James is anemic, and he's been recommended by a doctor to have a 2,850 calorie a day intake. So Basically, the setup behind this is, you know, he's trying to, you know, go on this special diet where he just eats eggs for his only protein, but 
the nutrition facts that it tells him how many he should be eating and how many protein, how much protein he should get, how much fat is in it, and all that bunch of stuff is based off of a diet that he can't follow. It's based off of a 2,000 calorie diet. He's got a problem with his blood, so he's got to eat more protein to make up for that. So we've got a, some, we've got a series of questions following this that's going to be asking things requiring him to make adjustments based on percentages to help him figure out what he needs to do. Now, what we're going to do for the rest of the class today is I'm going to help you get these set up. I'm not going to give you the answers, but I will help you get them set up. All right? So I don't think I'm going to be using the whiteboard since I've already kind of got them worked out. So I'm just going to switch to this. Okay. <clears throat> so... I'll go ahead just so that we don't have to keep flopping back and forth. Here is a picture of that. I need those back, by the way, just to, you know, because it's a classroom set. We're trying to be judicious with our printing. All right, so question one. Simple enough. How many eggs must James eat to meet the requirements for his daily intake of protein? round to a whole egg. Actually, I think I'm going to have to use a whiteboard because for the video, I'm going to have to leave up the nutrition facts thing. Okay, so question one, how many eggs must James eat to meet his daily intake of protein? All right, so let's go back to the diagram. All right, and I'll just put that right there and I'll work it out over here on the whiteboard. Let me find my notes. All right. So, all right. So, this is percent lab three, number one. All right. So, the question said how many eggs does he have to eat to hit his uh, protein count? All right, let me zoom this in a little bit here. Uh, come on, let's go here. So, yeah, that'll work. So about 300. Yep. All right, <clears throat> so let's write down what we know. So based off the nutrition facts, we know that one egg is one serving, okay? And we know that one egg has six grams of protein. Again, that can be found down here. Oh, it didn't work. Turn on the pen. That can be found down here at the bottom of the chart. I'll highlight that so everybody can see it. Okay, and we also know that that six grams of protein is, yeah, let's put it, Protein, and we know that that six grams of protein is 12% of the daily amount that they recommend. Okay, so if he is using eggs as his only source of protein, then he is using eggs for 100% of his protein, right? If we know that six grams is equal to 12%, we need to figure out how many grams is equal to 100%, right? We can use proportions for a lot of these problems. They actually come in pretty handy. So, I'm gonna do this kind of laterally to save a little bit of room here. All right, so we know that six grams is proportional to the 12%, so we're trying to figure out what, how many grams are proportional to 100%. Cross multiply, so you got 12x equals 600, all right? And then, after you do that, you have to divide. So, yeah, we need to make sure that we cross multiply there. All right, so when you divide 600 by 12, oh, come on, how much do you get? The early colleges on work days, I just remembered, they're not gonna be here till like 
Wednesday, I don't think. So that's why they're not here. Yeah, totally forgot. Yeah, so what's 600 divided by 12? 50. All right, so now what that 50 grams represents is 50 grams of protein for a 2,000 calorie diet is 100% of the protein. Okay, so if you're getting 100% of your daily amount of protein, you need 50 grams. And, you, and that is just, you know, not even worrying about how many eggs that is right now. Now, the problem is for James, we've got to do something that we're going to call an anemic adjustment because he has problems with his red blood cells. He's either got too few or they're the wrong shape. You know, there's different kinds of anemia. So if we know then that, oops, let me get my marker order right here. If we know that 50 grams goes with 2,000 calories, we can go ahead and set that up. So 50 grams of protein goes with 2, thousand calories so we're trying to figure out how many grams goes with 2850 all right now <clears throat> before we go too far let me make sure that I don't you know uh, give you too much information because I don't want to you know make it to where you've only got to do one little thing why is uh <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Moodle wasn't opening for some reason. All right, so, <clears throat> new window. Okay, all right. So, yeah, we're good. I haven't gone too far yet. All righty, so go ahead and then figure out how many grams of protein that he would need for this. So, you would just Yep, cross multiply, okay? And when you do that, it turns out that uh, 2,000x is equal to how much? Yeah, 50 times 28, 50. We get 100 and 42,500. And then you divide that by the 2,000. Okay. And then that will tell you the number of grams of protein for a 2,850 calorie diet. Mm -hmm. So we've got 71.25 grams of protein for a 2,850 calorie diet. Now, that is still not your answer. I don't know what word I was trying to write there and didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to. Okay, that's still not your answer. That is just how many grams of protein were needed for a 2,850 calorie diet. You got to go back to what the question was asking. And the question was asking this. How many eggs does he have to eat? Okay, so what you're going to do, and I wrote it on that picture right here. Okay, let me see if this is too far, if I click on it. Use a proportion or some other method to figure out how many eggs are needed to get 71.25 grams of protein. So what you'll do is you're going to take the 71.25 grams of protein 
and divide that by how many grams of protein are in an egg. Then you'll have how many you need. Now, don't say that out loud because that will, you know, we're, you know, this is still your active lab. I don't have a, I didn't do a practice scenario for this one because, you know, this one's hard enough to explain on its own. So anything that you need to go back and fill the gaps in for, <clears throat> here, is the, here is a previously worked out example. It's pretty much, you know, the same thing I got on the, on the board over there. No, you're going to take the 71.25 and divide it by how many grams of protein are in an egg, and then that will tell you how many eggs you need. Yeah. All right. Any other questions about number one? Well, I got a picture right here in Moodle. Yeah. Yeah. These ones I've already got in Moodle because, uh, again, when I taught the support classes, when these, when this lab came up, I was, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I was having to answer the same question so much that I just decided to leave it in there and walk through these. Yeah. All right. So let's go back to the doc and go to number two. All right. Question number two says check. Let's make it a little bigger. <clears throat> check the percent increase of the caloric intake versus the percent increase for protein. What can be best said about your findings? All right, so it's either gonna be the same or different, but, and then you have to tell why. So first let's go over what we, what's needed to be done for this one. All right, this one's a little bit blurry, apologies, but it'll be all right. Okay. So number two on your dock, percent increase is a hint that you're going to be going to be using percent change. All right, so we're going to be going back to our percent change formula, and it says check the percent increase of the calories versus the protein. Okay, so number two is percent change of the calories versus the protein. Okay, so <clears throat> first, let's go back and review the percent change formula. The percent change formula is new minus old divided by old times 100. Let me switch the camera here. So. So new minus old divided by old times 100. You're going to do two percent change problems, one for the calories and one for the protein. Okay, so let's start with the calories. All right. Now, in terms of, I'll just use a delta symbol for change. <clears throat> so in terms of new minus old, What were the two, like what calorie number did we start at and then what did we change it to? What was the initial amount of calories on the last problem? What number of calories are the nutrition facts based off of? Yeah. What number of calories was the nutrition facts based off of? Not yet. Not, not worrying about the protein just yet. I'm looking at the calories. Oh, oh the calories. 2,000 diet, 2,000 calories. Right. So if we went from a 2,000 calorie diet to a 2,850 calorie diet, right? So 2,850 is your new one, and then 2,000 is your old one. Blue marker is about to go. Okay. So. 2850 minus 2000 divided by 2000 times 100. Let's leave that there for just a second. Let's just let's just leave it that far for now. Okay. All righty. <clears throat> and the 100 out beside it, we're trying to make it cover the percent. Percent? Yeah. 
Percent change requires you to multiply it by 100. Yep, yep, you're right. All right, so then we'll do the protein. Okay, same formula. Percent change, and I'm just going to use the delta symbol for change to save a little room. Again, new minus old divided by old times 100. What were the two grams of protein that we had? Well, that was off the carton. But like, what were the two grams of protein for the 100% of the daily amounts that we looked at? There was one for a 2,000 calorie diet, and there was another one for the 2850 calorie diet. Uh, I said 50 grams of protein for 2,000 calories. All right, so 50 is our old one. And then what was the new one? Yep, 71.25. Okay, so to get that one, you're going to do 71.25 minus 50 divided by 50. Ah, drop my marker. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to take those, and I'll show you why. So if we hop back over to the picture I've already got in here, let's swap this out. And pull, let's pull this down a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> 2850 minus 2000 divided by 2000 times 100 for the calories. 71.25 minus 50 divided by 50 times 100 for the protein. The way that you get your answer for this is you find both percentages, compare them, and then you choose the best answer. All right, so you're going to take these all the way down to a percent. You'll subtract, divide, then multiply by 100 on both of those, and then see what you get. Now, looking at the question page, we know that they're either going to be the same or different, right? So whether, they, whether you get the same thing or something different, you need to know what it means for each one in terms of why, okay? So I'm going to take it back over here to the uh, whiteboard a minute. So <clears throat> the first one says, if you get two percentages that are different, it, are they different because the bases are different? And what they mean is the 2,000 and the 50. Yeah, they're different. So if you think that that's the one, go with that one. B, they are the same, and it's because they are increasing by the same amount. Uh, increasing by the same amount means is 2,850 minus 2,000, the same thing as 71.25 minus 50. So B is looking at this part here. So without, you know, letting the cat out of the bag, we'll see how many people put that option. C, are they different? And it's because the calorie increase is not consistent with the protein increase. Well, it's not consistent, but then again, does it have to be? You're measuring two different things based off of two different uh, percentages. So do they have to be consistent? All right, so think about that one. D, they are the same, and it's because both are based off of the 2,000 calorie diet. So if you look, where is the 2,000 calorie diet information? The 2,000 calorie diet information is in both places where it says old. All right, so if you like that one the best, uh, use that one. All right, so you gotta answer two things. First, you gotta see what your percentages are. Then you've gotta see if they're the same or different, and then, Whichever one you get, you've got to look at these choices and see, okay, well, this one sounds the best, so we'll go with that. All right? I like A and B. <laughs> well, then let's see what you got after you figure it out. I don't want to give too much away because I'm already giving away plenty. I'm going to write either A or B. <laughs> All right. So any questions about number two? Again, if you need to go back and catch any of it, here's the picture from a couple of years ago uh, in Moodle. Okie doke, number three. <clears throat> Let me 
me switch this screen a minute here so everybody can see it. The total fat on the Nutrition Facts label states that five grams is 6% of the daily intake for the 2,000 calorie diet. So what they mean, if we scroll back up here to the diagram, is right here where, ooh, where it says total fat. Oh, for, come on, I gotta turn the marker on. Right here where it says total fat, five grams, that means that five grams of fat is 6% of your daily recommended amount. Yeah, intake is, yeah, yeah, same thing. All right, oh, forgot to turn the marker off. Good. So going back to number three then. <clears throat> All right, so within that, it said that one and a half grams is saturated and said to be 8% of the daily intake. Saturated ones are the bad ones. They're harder to break apart. So they don't, they don't want you to have too many of those because they tend to stick. So one and a half grams is saturated and said to be 8% of the daily intake. With that information, determine the recommended intake of unsaturated fats for a 2,000 calorie diet and round to the nearest tenth. All right, so I'm going to minimize that one and we're going to hop back over to the old whiteboard here. All right. Okay. So this is number three, and we are looking for the unsaturated fats amount. Okay. So for this one, let's see how I don't have my watch on. I can't wear it with this microphone. All right, we got about 10 minutes left. So if we don't get to number four, we'll look at it on uh, Wednesday to kick things off. Okay, so unsaturated fats. We got to go back to our proportions. All right, that problem and the nutrition fact thing said that five grams was equal to six percent of the daily amount. So we need to figure out how many grams is equal to 100% of the daily amount. So we got to do, go back to another percent proportion. All right, cross multiply and divide, and we get 6x equals 500. Then you'll divide both sides by 6, and x comes out to be how much? All right, so we'll say 80, since I said nearest tenth, we'll just go 83.3 grams of total fat, okay? That's not separating saturated or unsaturated or anything like that. Now, the separation comes on the next part over there where it says within that, 1.5 is saturated and said to be 8% of the daily intake. So that then becomes a separate problem, sort of, where you go, all right, I got to do another proportion. 1.5 grams is 8% of the daily intake. So do another percent proportion to figure out how much that is. And then I think that's as far as I got to take that one. Let me double check. I don't want to give away too much here. Yeah. Okay. So if we look here on the board problem, all right. So it says, again, five grams, is to, five grams of total fat is 6% of the daily amount. 1.5 grams of total fat is saturated and 8% of the daily. So we got our total fat here of 83.3 grams, okay? Then we set up our proportion, 1.5 over eight equals to X over 100. Work that out to figure out what that is because that is your saturated amount. All right, let me, sw let me swap here. So work that out to be your saturated amount. Okay, oh, stop it. And then to solve it, once you get your saturated amount, subtract the saturated amount from the total. Okay, so we know the total grams is 83.3. Use the percentage over there for uh, 
or sorry, the total amount is 83.3. I think I misspoke. Total amount is 83.3. The saturated amount, we don't know it yet. Carry that proportion to completion and then you'll find it. And then whatever that is, you subtract it from 83.3 to find your unsaturated amount. And the 1.5 over the 8, that's... That came from the carton where it said... Yeah, let me, get, let me back up here. That came from the carton and from the problem where it said that 1.5 grams. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Yep, right there. All right, I think we've got time to do number four if we hurry. All right. Number four, carbohydrates, fat, and protein are called macronutrients. They are the nutrients you use in the largest amounts. Macronutrients are the nutritive components of food that the body needs for energy and to maintain the body structure and systems. And that came uh, from uh, an article online. So macronutrients are used as ratios, or for our purposes, fractions. Okay? So the following is a list of macronutrients that give the number of calories per gram. They are made up by the ratios of nine fat to four carbs to four protein. What that means, a little bit more literally, is nine calories come from fat for every one gram, nine, or four calories come from carbs for every one gram, and then four calories come from protein for every one gram, okay? The question says, verify that an egg is indeed 70 calories with the nutrition facts. Is it the same? Is it different? Explain why for either case, along with how you determine how they were the same or different. Now, on the actual answer entry, I've got multiple choices, like kind of like number two. So you can help, you, help that, use that to help you aim this in the right direction. But <clears throat> for setting it up, try to move a little quicker here. All right, so for number four, we say, okay, so out of the fat, we know that it was nine calories for every one gram. Out of the carbs, we know that it was four calories for every one gram. Out of the protein, we know it was also four calories for every one gram. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take these and kind of use them like scale factors or unit factors and compare them to the information from the nutrition facts and see how many calories are coming from the grams of each of these in the egg. So for starters, for the fat, we're going to say, okay, well, if nine calories are in one gram of, of anything, one gram of fat, nine calories in one gram of fat. Well, how much fat was there in the egg? Well, there was five grams of fat in the egg. So you'll use that proportion to figure out how many calories of fat. Don't, don't say it out loud because uh, it's, you know, it's part of the answer. All right, now carbs, of course, is super easy to do because if you go back and look at where it said the carbs were, in an egg, there are no carbohydrates in an egg. So that's just gonna be zero. And there's no point in uh, doing the proportion because it's just gonna zero out. Whereas with the protein, we know that there were six grams of protein in the egg from the first question, right? and from the chart up there. So you're gonna figure out how many calories that is and then get the total number of calories of the protein, okay? Then to finish it off, you're gonna take the calories from the fat, the calories from the carbs, the calories from the protein and add them up and then compare to the 70 calories from, uh, from the carton. Okay, now if we look at the answer entry, we will see what the choices are. 
Let's clear that out. Okay. Yeah, so again, here's the picture for number four. It's got it all laid out there for you. And it says to solve, find the calories from cat, from cat, from fat, carbs, and protein, and add them together and compare what you got against 70. So it's kind of like number two. Are they the same? Are they different? All right. So let me pull up the answer entry just as a preview. I'm not going to do any of it. I'm just going to show you. Uh, okay. So, yeah, these are shuffled as well. So let me find where this one is. Okay, so that one's there. That one looks like four is in the same place on this one. Okay. So, is it 69 or 70? So once you figure that out, is it 69 because it's most likely a rounding error on the label's part? Is it 70 because the label's fine? There's nothing wrong with it. Is it 70 because the macronutrient amounts plus the amount for saturated fat makes it 70? Or is it 69 calories because the macronutrient doesn't account for the sodium like the label did? So whichever one that you think it is, give it your best guess and you'll be all right. So yeah, not much to that one in terms of how many questions there are, but you know, since there's only four of them, they count a lot more. So oh, you, now yeah. when you said yeah. we're comparing, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. When you said we're comparing it to the 70 calorie, we're literally comparing that result to the 70. You're seeing if what you got is 70 or a little more or a little less or, yeah, whichever. And then which, if it's the same, why is it the same? If it's different, why is it different? Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So on Wednesday, when we come back in, and we record again, we will, you know, if you have any questions about, like say if you missed one on percent lab two that you weren't sure about, we can look at that. If you want to review any of the egg stuff, we'll go back over that. But on Wednesday, we need to try to get through that stuff quickly because we're going to start reviewing for the test because the test opens next week. All right. Any questions? All right. Well, hopefully everything worked out okay. I'm going to listen to the video for this later after it gets finished, and hopefully 